Hey there, and welcome to You Talk. We connect with extraordinary people across Canada and ask them about their stories, passions, and experiences. I'm your host, Ryan Funk. Once the excitement of Christmas has faded and the new year has come and gone, it doesn't feel like there's much to anticipate until spring. Luckily, there's the largest winter festival in Western Canada, Festival du Voyageur. Celebrate Voyageur, Métis, and First Nations histories February 18th to 27th here in Winnipeg, Manitoba. To tell us more, we have Chantal from Festival. I'm Chantal Villefort, Chantal Villefort in French, and uh, I'm the Director of Marketing, Communications, and Sales at Festival du Voyageur. Most people will know at this point, but what exactly is Festival du Voyageur? So Festival du Voyageur is uh, just a staple in the Manitoba community here. It is actually the largest French um, event in Western Canada. It also doubles as the largest winter festival in uh, Western Canada, which is really great. It's a winter festival that consists of a lot of traditional elements to it. It uh, began uh, about 50, this will be our 53rd edition of Festival this year in 2022. And uh, consists of you know traditional music, um, French Canadian uh, meals, and um, traditional cultures and horse sleigh rides and dog sleigh uh, dog rides and our very famous snow sculptures as well. We have a snow sculpture symposium, usually an international one, so that's always a great thing. And we have uh, historical interpretation at the Fort Gibraltar as well. So it's really uh, the park around uh, Whittier Park around Fort Gibraltar that gets transformed into the Voyageur Park every year for this uh, event. Yeah, you mentioned 53 years. Uh, how many years has... Um been affected by COVID now. I, it feels like such a long time, like time just doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, no, you're right. And actually that's kind of funny, Ryan, because uh, we always say, oh, you know, the last festival in 2020 and people correct us and they say, I think you mean 2019 and we say no no we actually had a festival three weeks before the lockdown in 2020 so we were kind of that last big gathering here in manitoba and that last big celebration of you know people coming together in a in a, in a in an environment where you could be together in a tent and celebrate and dance and so uh last year was really the first year that it got affected in 2021 and the restrictions were very, very strict at that time. So uh, we pivoted to a uh, virtual edition of festival. So we tried as much as possible to offer the, the feel and all of the traditional things that people love about this event from home. So virtual concerts that were recorded. We did things like take home meals of the traditional meals of the tortière and uh, tatour suc and sopo po competition, um, as well as the the typical um, jig and violon contest, which everybody loves. We did a virtual edition and as well as the beard growing. I see you have a beard there. So the beard growing contest as well was virtual and was more of just a, a more of a fun thing last year. I know I know another cool component is the logo was always changing. And I saw like the new revealed logo for uh, 2022. Really cool stuff. What what can you tell me about that? Yeah, so this is our third year working for with local artist Jordan Stranger here, and he's an amazing artist, and we just love him. He works so well with Festival, and uh, he did his first design for Festival in 2020, and it was so beautifully well shaved. Used so many different meanings and and colors around it, and just. Uh, did such a great job that we worked with him last year as well. And last year, the logo was a bit more open logo, kind of showing the outdoorsy, more warmer kind of colors. Uh, and this year, you know, we're kind of taking a chance. This was uh, when we were designing this with Jordan was more around uh, August, September, when, when things are looking a little better. So we were very optimistic and kind of designed the logo with it being, you know, more of a coming together and people coming together and listening to music together and, uh, just joining again under the tents and things like that. So, uh, you know, situation has changed, but that doesn't mean that that feeling is not there. So that's still the feeling that we want people to have and to be positive and optimistic about is, you know, finding your friends again and finding your family members and people you haven't seen maybe in two years pre-COVID uh, that people will find themselves again at Voyager Park, being able to enjoy the activities and programming that we put on. When we're talking about, you know, the, the history of uh, French Canadians here in Manitoba, I mean, you can't not talk about the Métis people, you know, directly involved in uh, Manitoba's uh, creation. So, you know, what can you share about how Métis and First Nations culture is intertwined within French Canadian culture that we celebrate at Festival? 
Yeah, no, exactly. It's you, you can't have one without the other. It's just, it's part of its history. It's part of the Fort's history and the Northwest company and all of that. So, you know, I am a, you know, almost a, a, pro a product or exhibit of, of that uh, generational, uh, you know, uh, evolution and all these things. So, yeah, I mean, I know that within our festival, we've really done a lot of work to, to represent all of those different uh, cultures coming together and seeing different ways we can represent that in our programming. And I know like uh, for myself personally, um, so I'm Métis, I'm French Métis, and uh, you know, I didn't kind of start learning about what that meant to be Francophone Métis and French Métis in Manitoba. I was a little bit older and even into kind of my adult years. So my brother, actually, Miguel, he's the owner of Itchy Boy, who does all of the sashes and things like that for festivals. So once he started his company and really educating himself on our culture and our history, that really brought about um, my own learning and my own um, understanding of what it meant to be French Métis and how intertwined it really is in the community and everything that we do and especially with Festival is such a great representation of all those cultures coming together and we do such a you know, we keep learning, we keep building and fostering relationships with uh, different um, elders and things like that. And um, if I can permit myself to elaborate, so Festival itself takes on uh, more of a, as well as a, a private approach with the staff as well, just with educating us um, and having private ceremonies with elders, just so we can better understand where we're coming from when we're putting these things in our programming. And it's really coming from a place of understanding rather than just, you know, doing it because we feel like it's the right thing to do. We do it because we truly believe in that reconciliation, those relationships and fostering that. Multiculturalism is such an important part of like just modern Canada. You, you can't have that without Indigenous and First Nation communities. So I'm really excited when I, I see initiatives that want to bring those cultures and voices of people to the forefront. Some of the things that we try and incorporate in our programming, I mean, we obviously have the musical artists and the, and the uh, performances around that. So we have just a, a variety, always a variety. We're always thinking of that when we're, um, you know, making sure to, to book certain acts and things like that. Um, and, uh, you know, we've got some new stuff coming in this year which is really exciting we've got the infinity fire which uh, i've alluded to in the, some of the communication that we put out last week um that's something that's uh you know was kind of thought out internally here and it's something that we're building with um some partners and and some of our elders in at turtle lodge and with uh, the union mitzis uh saint joseph so we uh yeah we're going to be introducing that it's going to be really cool it's a new fixture that's going to be part of the park and we hope that it's just going to be there for a very long time and the representation behind it will be really uh uh, really fun for everyone to see. What other components or facets of festival? Uh, I mean, you've elaborated a little bit on uh, some of them, but what can people all expect this year? This year, we kind of have um, what we call four pillars to the festival. So just to simplify a bit the messaging, I've got the, the Voyager Park, which will be transformed a little different this year. Um, we won't have the big, big tents like we typically do because of the restrictions. Uh, we will have a warm up tent though, and we will have you know a spot where people can buy souvenirs and things like that. We'll have food truck vendors where people can get some food. We'll have some traditional food as well. We'll have the interpretation outdoor on the fort in the fort. Um, we'll also have the kids playground, the snow playground, which is always very popular. The horse sleigh rides, have some ice sculpting uh, workshops. So there's going to be a lot that people are going to be able to do once they get into the park. Um, the nice big thing in the park this year is that new La Boite à Chanson, which we call it, it's our new mobile concert trailer. I've actually had the pleasure of going to see the construction of it this week and they're putting it together. It looks awesome. I'm very <laughs> excited about it. Uh, people are going to, it's really great to present to the state of community and we'll be able to use it um, during the summer and things like that with partners. So it's a really great piece that we're adding to, to Festival this year. So that's the first, so there's Voyager Park. And then we also have concerts in the evenings at C CFM, so some consider Franco Manito Bay, that's on Provence. We're going to have evening concerts there, as well as the uh, jig and uh, fiddle competitions uh, there as well in person with a virtual uh, category. So that would be the second pillar. And this year, uh, if everything goes well, with the trailer, we're actually going to transport the trailer from the park to the forks. Um, and we're going to have some free concerts there for everybody and enjoy. So uh, those will be during the evening week of festivals. So they'll be programming each day of the week um, this year. So the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday evenings, and possibly Friday as well uh, at uh, the forks close to the 
I don't know exactly the spot, but it'll be there. When, and people when people go to the forest, they'll be able to see. <laughs> they'll hear it. It's a big thing, and there'll be music coming out of it. They won't be able to miss it. So yeah, those will be really great. Probably from six to eight type thing of programming, and then we'll have the virtual component as well. So we're going to release some new um, pre-recorded concerts um, throughout the week as well as people will be able to do the take home meal kits again with the cocktails, which are being uh, created right now too, which is great. Um, so they'll be able to do and participate that way as well. I've also seen some uh, like video components posted on the social media. Is that just to like hype things up to give previews of things or is that like an independent project within uh, all of Festiva. We release, so we do have some content from last year that's still up on our YouTube channel that people can enjoy. So past concerts and things like our Mitchif, Minute Mitchif series. So we are developing a second series of Minute Mitchif. They were well received. So we're going to be, uh, we've already filmed them and are, they're almost ready to go to release them during the week of Festiva. Uh, we've also got some different videos where people can do activities at home, like build their own snow sculptures in their backyards, things like that, make their own, you know, taffy. Um, so those are all online and we're just kind of getting people excited. We can't sell tickets yet. So we're trying to get people hyped up. It's festival season and we want to get people excited about it. Um, so we will be re-releasing some more content for 2022, but that 2021 stuff is still there up for everybody to enjoy. The snow sculptures, always exciting when you're going down, you see them, you know, down the, the boulevard, like it's it's so exciting. So you said uh, international, so there's people coming from all over the world to, you know, partake in this competition? Typically, yes. So typically it's an international competition. So this year, obviously we wouldn't, we weren't able to move forward with the international competition. What we did with, was a Canadian one. So we've got some teams coming in. We've got a few teams coming in from some provinces and territories, and then we've got some local teams as well here. So that consists of seven big uh, different sculptures that are in the park that are part of the symposium. So seven different teams working on those. But yes, you will have seen some of the big blocks all over the city. I think the one in front of the museum is started almost done even. We've got some of the big blocks put on Provence and they'll be starting to work on those sooner than later. So yeah, when you get those and the billboards going up, you kind of get that festival feel and and it's great. This will be the second year that Festival has had to deal with COVID restrictions. What are some of the challenges when, you know, planning an outdoor event like this? <laughs> What challenges? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I think that um, by now everybody kind of knows the type of things that you have to adapt to and change and modify occurring to restrictions and things like that. I think, um, you know, had you asked me that question, you know, in December, end of November, we were more positive that we would be able to return to a full festival in person with the tents and everything. Um, some of the challenges, uh, you know, really have to do with um, adapting super quick, um, not losing, um, you know, optimism that we can offer something um, and really reminding ourselves that we're doing it because we, we love festival and the community loves festival and it brings joy and it brings, you know, smiles to faces. So we want to make sure that we continue having that that festival joie de vivre that everybody always talks about and, and loves. So, you know, with the, the virtual last year, didn't want to give up, wanted to make sure we could offer something. People were at home, they needed something to look forward to and make them smile and to support um, artists as well. So that's been something we've had to adapt to this year with the new restrictions after Christmas um, that a lot of, the first thing we had to do was cancel uh, our uh, contracts with um, artists out of province, unfortunately. But it also gives us a great opportunity to really focus on supporting our local artists. So, um, you know, to not give up on giving them their, their contracts and trying as hard as we can to offer um, as many contracts as we could, depending on the platforms that we had to offer them um, for the concerts. So, yeah, some of the challenges and then some with volunteers and things like that. So, um, you know, it's a little more challenging to to find uh you know, some people to help with building the park and volunteers for the park itself. We are still looking for volunteers if anybody's interested. Um, and yeah, and just adapting our programming, you know, we didn't want to go full virtual this year if we were able to offer uh, in-person events and in-person activities. So we wanted to make sure to try and do that as much as possible and, and offer a hybrid rather than just go virtual or just canceling. We really want to, we're not giving up, we don't want to give up and we, we, hope that we can really bring something fun for everyone to be able to participate in. Yeah, it's a, it, it's exciting when you can have like 
people from across Canada coming here to, to celebrate, but that's right. There are so many amazing and talented people here yeah. in Manitoba. So many, and even in the, the French community as well. It just we, we know so many of them. And, uh, you know, to support them and to give them that platform that Festival offers them is, is, just, uh, is just fun. And, and we're very proud to be able to do that. When does uh, Festival officially kick off this year? And you mentioned something about tickets. When when do those go live? <laughs> yeah, um, so Festival is officially uh, February 18th to the 27th, so the Friday to the next Sunday. Um, and it will vary on the activities. Like I said, some will be the concerts at the CCFM. Sometimes uh, you'll be able to come into the park. All of our information is on our website right now. We released uh, some information last week. We'll continue to update that as things change. Um, so people can always refer to that. For ticket sales specifically, we're just waiting for uh, you know that new those new restrictions to come in to see what we can uh, offer in terms of how many people to have in the park safely and make sure that we do that safely and with uh, and and just uh, aligning with all of the uh, public health restrictions as well. So uh, that's kind of where we're at. But uh, as soon as they are on sale, people will know about it. They can follow us. We have Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and we have our website heho.ca that people can refer to as well. Mm -hmm. It's just a few weeks away. So what are you most yeah. excited about for this year's festival? I'm excited to see people at the park. Honestly, this is, and to hear the music and, and really, I, I hope that people get wowed with the new concert trailer, La Boite Chanson. I think, uh, like I said, I've seen it a little bit and I'm just excited and I haven't even seen the printed product. So uh, to see everybody at the park and just enjoying themselves and seeing, you know, the families come out and the music and the food and just that atmosphere. Like I was saying, that joie de vivre, that atmosphere that Festival gives to people. Um, to have that feeling again, it's kind of a very heartwarming feeling and it, it makes everybody very happy. So I can't wait to get that feeling. <laughs> That'll be great. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned uh, volunteers. Uh, where can people find out more information if they want to uh, volunteer? Yeah, so if you just go on our website, like I said, heho.ca, uh, we've got the button there that right at the top, red button, you can't miss it, that says, you know, become a volunteer. Click on there and it'll bring you to the volunteer page that has all the information and all of the different positions that we're still looking for. If you have any stories you'd like us to share or communities we should highlight, leave a comment on our social media or reach out to us on our website. I'm Ryan Funk. This was You Talk. And have yourself a good one.